So when when you first when you hear the word COVID, COVID nineteen, what word or phrase comes to mind? Oh boy, um, I would say that uh, there's just a huge cloud of question when it comes to that virus for me. I there's a lot of things I don't feel like I understand about it. So, Brian, word or phrase when you hear COVID nineteen? Controversy. Debbie. Um, I would say controversy as well. And then, um, and I also think of isolation just because we got so isolated with it. Sue. Manipulation. David. Government manipulation. David from Texas. A very real illness is manipulated by the government for political reasons. Diane. Varying responses. Lisa. A serious illness. Michael. I would say a weapon used in many different ways. Brian. Brian from Texas. Brian from Texas. Yeah. Uh, disease, controversy. That's pretty much it. Peter. Uh, potentially bad virus, but there's still a lot of questions in my mind about um, the exact details of it. Matthew. I would say real virus, but it's been overplayed or used for political gain. Chad. I would say never let a good crisis go to waste is the perspective of politician. Marie. I would call it a hyped up version of the flu. Aaron. Opportunistic and exhausting. Doug. 2020. Patrick. Panic born. Lauren. Lockdown. Adam. Um, I would say a weaponized engineered disease, which has been uh, cynically and irresponsibly used uh, for the politicization of medicine. Christian. I say deadly but manageable. When I say COVID-19 vaccination, vaccine, Adam, what do you think of first? Um, a miracle, albeit suspicious. Lauren. Unsure. Too many questions. Patrick. Rushed. Doug from California. Experimental. Aaron. Impressive, but hesitant. Marie. Gary, not knowing the long-term side effects. Chad. Long-term side effects, unknown. Matthew. Experimental and unknown how it will affect long-term. David from Texas. Long-term side effects. Diane from Ohio. Unproven. Lisa. Uh, efficacy unknown. Michael from Oklahoma. Don't hold my freedom hostage. Brian from Texas. Um, experimental and not, maybe not necessary. Peter from Missouri. Not enough history. David from Colorado. Not sufficiently tested. Sue. Unknown. Debbie from Georgia. Un Uncertainty. Brian from Florida. Side effects. And Jen from Iowa. Untrustworthy. Oh my God. I want to, it's, it's a new class of vaccination. Uh, I think the short term, term testing was extremely good, but again, we don't know the long-term side effects. And uh, there's, I want to know what's going to happen at this point in time with my age and my health, my fear of the vaccine is more than my fear of getting the illness. How many of you would agree with that statement that your fear of the vaccine is greater than your fear of getting the illness? Raise your hands. That is almost, almost everybody. Not everyone, but almost everyone. Anthony Fauci, word oh. or phrase to describe, hold on, <laughs> word or phrase to describe Anthony Fauci. Aaron from Florida. Was she washing? Lauren from New Jersey. Liar. Jen from Iowa. 
Puppet. Debbie from Georgia. Flip flopper. Peter from Missouri. Inconsistent. Marie from New York. Flip flopper. Chad from Minnesota. Inconsistent. Diane from Ohio. Self serving. Brian from Florida. Opportunistic. Doug from California. I have, I, I, I've tuned him out, frankly. I have no opinion anymore. I don't listen to him. I'm not going to let you board a plane without having a passport, a digital passport that says that you got the COVID-19 vaccine. If that were the case, how many of you in this, on this group, how many of you would get the vaccine? If you knew that you could not get on a plane. Okay, so Debbie would. I, I would delay it as long as possible. Yeah. Marie, I, would delay I, would, I wouldn't rush to do it. I would just, I would change my travel plans. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Lauren, you would do it. I love to travel. I've been sitting, you know, we haven't traveled. Um, I'm used to going away three, four times a year. So if I, if this is the only way I could go away, I, I, I'm going to have to take the chance. Jen, you Same would get the me. vaccine. Jen from Iowa, you get the vaccine if it meant that you could travel by flight. I think eventually I would cave and I would get the vaccine, even though like my husband and I both survived COVID last month. Um, he almost died, but I still think that at some point I might be forced to do it. And it would, I would rather it be my choice than it be forced upon me by other entities. Debbie, if it meant you not being able to fly or you being able to fly, you would get the vaccine. I would get the vaccine. I absolutely, we love to travel and we love to take cruises. And so I, I would, I would, I would get it to travel. Give me a word or phrase, nothing more to describe Donald Trump's handling of the COVID virus. Jen from Iowa. Amazing. Brian from Florida. Did the best he could with what he was given. Debbie from Georgia. Impressive. Sue from Iowa. Respected our freedom. Michael from Oklahoma. Leadership. Lita, Lisa from Ohio. Excellent. David from Colorado. Good, except for the warp speed part of Operation Warp Speed. Diana, Diane from Ohio. Mixed. David from Texas. Unprecedented. Brian from Texas. Very impressive. Peter from Missouri. Pretty good overall. Matthew from Michigan. Impressive. Chad from Minnesota. Um, I think... It was the best as what he could do, but I wish he wouldn't have tweeted as much. <laughs> it didn't help his case. We were just doing COVID-19 here. Maria from New York. Um, I think he did an excellent job. Aaron from Florida. He was all in, but he tended to listen to the wrong people sometimes. Doug from California. I like that he brought in the private sector as fast as he did. Patrick from Tennessee. He let Fauci and Burks and that crowd hang around too long and influence him. And as some folks said, he did the best that he could. They listened to the wrong people. Lauren from New Jersey. He did an amazing job. Adam from New York. Overall, excellent, but underrated. Now I'm going to ask one more question and then Senator, I'm going back to you. <clears throat> Who are you more likely to trust when it comes to getting the vaccine? Donald Trump or your own doctor? You got to choose Donald Trump or your own doctor. Who's going to have a greater influence on whether or not you get the vaccine? Raise your, hand, raise your hand if you say Donald Trump. Wow, how quickly they forget. No, <laughs> so, no, so your own doctor is more important than Donald Trump. I think people who have doubts and concerns about how this has been handled are so unfairly maligned as being COVID deniers or grandma killers. Yeah, the virus is real, it, but everybody's ignoring the actual facts of the virus, uh, the, the great media uh, thing. If you're, not, if you're over 65 or if you're fat, you're much more likely to get the virus and possibly die from it. And nobody has, I mean, they, they totally ignored that and made it like, and like the one gentleman said, people that you thought were normally sane, intelligent people 
We're totally like, oh my God, I'm going to die from this virus. Uh, and, and so the media totally fe feeds on that and wants to sell that. Uh, and everybody that they don't think, they just panic. Um, I guess I would quote, I, I talked to a Russian, um, a person from Russia and his wife in a, in a small group of friends years ago. And he said to me something that was jarring at the time, but now I see it. He said, the difference between America and Russia is that in Russia, we knew everything that came out of the media was propaganda. In America, you have to discern it for yourself. And I thought, okay, we have more freedom of the press. Great. That's what I, I went, okay, it's better to live in America. And now it seems that that's like a prophecy of some kind, not, a, I don't want to get crazy, but I'm just saying that that seems that the media and the engine that works has been so laid bare throughout. It's so much more eye opening. Like you thought it was kind of, you know, they all had their biases, you know, but you were willing to take it with a grain of salt. But now it's heightened to such a level that it's just mind blowing. In the past, I would have been throwing that out with, oh, whatever. But now it's just so much more obvious. And that's why I just, it's sad because I don't know who to trust. And that's not the America I grew up in. Well, Frank, can I just say that it, it's all very logical. Like I look at this logically. There's no, you know, craziness of, because I think one way politically that I can't look at logic and reason. And I think what you said very kind of cavalierly about, so what that the pharmaceuticals let the results out five days after the election. And to me, that's a big, so what? It just, it makes you doubt a little bit of the motives and the politicization of science. So yeah. if you really want us to trust the science, I think politics has to be taken out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right. also, if we could be if we could be told that by being vaccinated, things would get back to normal again. And they don't even, say you know, that. and that <laughs> happened and that happened. But that's not happening. No, things still are wear masks. Down. Yep. Right. Still masks. Don't get together with family. Biden said the other night, oh, you could have a small gathering by Fourth of July. Small no, no, gathering. Maybe. Maybe, well, maybe if we behave. People? Yeah, if we four behave. people and a few hot dogs. I mean, that's mm -hmm. to me. If everyone's getting vaccinated, <laughs> we, we got to move on. And what you just saw was what happens when politics gets put in the middle of this. It's just got to come out somehow. I, I think that that is going to be key to all of this. That it and just ask yourself, <laughs> ask yourself who put the politics there? Which but side the had a benefit to having politics introduced to this? And yeah. now they just keep it yeah. going. It's it's not going to be taken out. It's not. Right. Nope. The fear mongering started at the beginning and it's never ended. Right. And if there was a, fact, gonna... a point that I want to see, I want to see the data point that says when we reach herd immunity and what yeah. percentage, is there a percentage of the population that could be vaccinated and then we're herd immunity? Because I haven't well, heard that. They, the minute they tell you that the goalposts will move again, right? Because it was how many days until we're done and we can take off our masks and three weeks until if we all do this and it'll be over. And we're tired of that. They set it up and then it moves. And so how do you trust that if we all get to vaccination level, we're going to be done with this? And don't forget the who changed the definition of herd immunity from natural to vaccinated. So talk about politicizing science. Dr. Frieden, I'm going to go to you now because Doug says he wants facts. Let's go. Give him okay. four facts and let's see if you can move them right now. One, if you get infected with the virus, it will go all over your body and stay there for at least a week and be much more likely to cause you long-term problems than the vaccine. Two, if you get the vaccine, it will prime your immune system but then the vaccine is gone. It will not be with you anymore. Three, more than 95% of the doctors who've been offered this vaccine have gotten it as soon as they can. Four, the more we vaccinate, the faster we can get back to growing our economy and getting jobs. And five, if people get vaccinated, we're going to save at least 100,000 lives of Americans who would otherwise be killed by COVID. Okay, I want a show of hands. 
How many of you would say that those five facts are impactful to you? Raise your hands if they're impactful. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's a I lot mean, of you. Please tell me why. Uh, Jen from Iowa, then Michael from Oklahoma, then Lisa from Ohio. Why are those facts impactful? Um, I think that the way you worded it does kind of paint the, the whole idea of getting the vaccination in a little more positive light. Um, but I still, I am still a little hesitant because of not n really knowing what the long-term effects of the virus are. So for me, I feel like also I'm in a younger group where maybe it's not necessarily a requirement for my age. Uh, the first fact that Dr. Frieden gave to me, I think, was the most impressive. Uh, I'm 65 years young. Like I said, I've been hesitant. My, both my wife and I think that we probably had COVID at the end of, towards the end of last year. Uh, but neither one of us uh, have been diagnosed with having COVID. We haven't had the vaccine. I don't see a necessary, I, I don't see the need for it right now. But what Dr. Frieden just said, I think, was pretty impactful to me. Leader McCarthy, uh, you've been listening to this conversation for a while now. What would you say to these these 20 voters? Well, I understand where you're coming from. And let me give you a different perspective or kind of perspective why I understand where you're coming from. I think that's why the election was lost was COVID. Um, I sat in a room, in a situation room in the White House a year ago and listened to Dr. Fauci tell me not to wear a mask because humidity, what the mask would build up would actually be worse for us. And I watched him change his mind. I watched the president standing next to him think that for 14 days, we had to shut down only for the capability of the hospitals that they don't get overrun. And then once it was shut down, I watched the medical people come to him and say he had to keep it shut. I watched the willpower of the president say no and, and go with what he truly believed. But I watched the president every step of the way say, do not cut anything short. Do you know why we have three vaccines today? It's because President Trump. And when I watched Joe Biden claim the vaccine wasn't even there until he was president, even though he got it ahead of time. Do you know when the phase three they went through, normally they only test like 10,000 people. On all these, they tested 30, 40,000. They went beyond it. And it was, it, it was almost like that American moment where here was a virus that came from China. We didn't invite it, we didn't wish it, but it was almost like the willpower of the ingenuity of America that we were gonna defeat it and not just for America, but for the entire world. And yes, I, when I sat back and I watched and I watched these pharmaceutical companies, when you find out they only brought it forward like a week after the election, when they knew the answer ahead of time. And when you saw it and you looked at the answer, like I get a flu shot every year because I'm shaking everybody's hand, but I don't assume that flu shot that I'm not going to get the flu because it usually only works 10% of the time. But these tests came back at 95%. Nothing comes back that great. They were hoping for 50%. Is, is Kevin's argument moving you with, and I'm sorry, the majority leaders, majority is the uh, Republican leader's argument moving you at all? No. <laughs> uh, Doug from California. I thought it was a good argument. Um, you know, Frank, honestly, I'm a big fan of data and, and I'm a big fan of reasoned, intelligent choice. So I think people ought to be able to look at the facts and look at their 40,000 adverse reactions to some of these viruses to some of these vaccines and come up with their own, their own reason choice with their doctor. And it's not Joe Biden's, it's not Joe Biden's decision whether or not everyone in America should be forced via corporations and airlines to get the vaccine. Oh, you can't see your kid because you didn't get the vaccine. Frank. So I think it was, I, I, and I think, you know, I have a lot of people in my family that have gotten it. They're happy, they're thrilled. I get emails, Eureka, I got a spot, good for them. And if you want to take it, great. And if you don't, and if you look at the data and you want to wait, you should be allowed to wait. So I'm, you know, sorry, that's that's my view. Is, Congress, is Congressman Winstrip uh, on this? 
So you've been giving vaccines out to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people during the weekends when you when you put on your National Guard uniform. What would you tell these people to convince them that they should be taking the vaccine? Well, you know, it's interesting because there's a lot of this in the whole process. Everyone's really talking about trust. And I can tell you when I'm in my military uniform, people trust me. When I'm in my white coat, people trust me. When I wear my congressional pin, all bets are off. And I even had a woman yesterday when I was, uh, we, we actually were getting them from nursing homes, going onto the bus to take care of them, uh, re- I should say senior living. And uh, one lady said, uh, I don't agree with you on one thing in politics, but I'm grateful you're here today uh, doing this in uniform and giving me a shot. And what I noticed really was that the people that we were seeing, and I've done this several weekends, uh, uh, the rural areas, it's everybody who's coming there as, as soon as they're eligible. In the more urban areas, we are seeing it from the most vulnerable first. So we're seeing largely African-American and largely older people, which of course, that's how Ohio's dishing it out, but they seem to be ready, willing, and wanting to do it. But I want to talk for a minute about one of the things people question, like, well, what does that mean if it's 95% uh, effective? What does that actually mean? And that's a good question. So when you do a trial, half the people get a placebo and half the people get a vaccine. And so in the Pfizer, for example, the Pfizer Pfizer study, um, of of the patients that had placebo, 162 developed COVID. Of those that got the vaccine, only eight. So you take that total that got COVID in that whole trial was 170. So eight out of 170 got the vaccine and still got COVID, which is about 5%, which gives you the 95% figure. So if that makes sense. But you know, one of the things that, that stands out to me is after being fully vaccinated, zero in the trial uh, were hospitalized or died. And obviously that's, that's a positive. I want to go on something too that, that uh, uh, Dr. Friedman was talking about. Actually, hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Sure. Repeat that statistic about the trial. So it, it, it said after fully vaccinated, zero people in the trial ended up hospitalized or died. They got vaccinated. Okay, Brian from Texas, your reaction to that argument? I I think that's a good argument, and. I think my basic thing is that I'm not in a super hurry to get the vaccine, but once it gets available and it's not a rush, I probably will get it. And I think that's a good argument there because I think that there's a lot of science out there that, that people aren't, um, they're ignoring. Um, the, um, the thing I made about obese and over, the reason that they're getting it is because they're more susceptible to all kinds of diseases. If they weren't gonna, you know, it's COVID just happens to be the one that gets them first. Patrick, Patrick, your reaction to the Congressman's argument? Because I've already had COVID and I'm a believer in the natural immunity from having the COVID. I will probably get it at some point, uh, the, 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 the vaccine. I just don't see any rush to do it until they can show me that people who have had COVID are more likely to have severe cases of COVID again the second time around. I, I just don't, I, right now, the, the, the science that I've seen shows that to, the, to be to the contrary. Right now, the COVID-19 vaccines are available to millions of Americans, and soon they will be available to everyone. This vaccine means hope. It will protect you and those you love from this dangerous and deadly disease. I want to go back to work and I want to be able to move around. To visit with Michelle's mom, to hug her and see her on her birthday. You know, I'm really looking forward to is going to opening day in Texas Ranger Stadium with a full stadium. We've lost enough people and we've suffered enough damage. In order to get rid of this pandemic, it's important for our fellow citizens to get vaccinated. I'm getting vaccinated because we want this pandemic to end as soon as possible. So we urge you to get vaccinated when it's available to you. So roll up your sleeve and do your part. This is our shot. Now it's up to you. Okay, I'm gonna ask each of you word or phrase 
to describe the impact of that ad? David from Colorado. Not much, really. Jen from Iowa. Not a lot. Brian from Florida. It was kind of like propaganda, honestly. Mm -hmm. Debbie from Georgia. It actually kind of annoyed me. <clears throat> Michael from Oklahoma. Not actors, no, no impact. Wow, their president's not actors, but uh, Lisa from Ohio. <laughs> Lisa from Ohio. Turn off. Diane from Ohio. Unity. David from Texas. Nothing but a celebrity endorsement. Sue from Iowa. Sorry, no, no, it didn't impact me. I wasn't moved. Brian from Texas. The wrong people impacted me badly. Peter from Missouri. Too much political baggage. Matthew from Michigan. No impact. Um, if it had been just George Bush, um, I think I trust him. Yeah. He got us through 9-11. Um, um, but with everybody else, it's, and I don't mean to pick sides. I really, it, it was politics. and We've been through a lot. And we're getting through it together. It was a challenge unprecedented. And so many rose to the occasion. Now, with the end in sight, we hope. We have to keep up the fight. Wear a mask, distance where possible. And if you can, get the vaccine. America, we're in this together. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. And I wanna take comments from each of you. And I'm going to go in the other direction. So Adam from New York, your reaction to that ad in a word or phrase? Uh, Unaffected pandering. Lauren from New Jersey. It doesn't make, it didn't make a difference, but I don't not like it. Patrick from Tennessee. Better than the last one, but they lost me with the mask. Doug from California. It had no impact. Really. Aaron from Florida. Melodramatic, we're all in this together, saturation, enough. Uh, Marie from New York. A little more feeling. I didn't feel it was as phony as the former president's. Two more. Chad from Minnesota. Um, it was better. It was much better. Um, it left some leverage in there for free will. I think they didn't, <laughs> it didn't feel as go do it and that's your only option. Um, but I, it still, it wouldn't move me to get it. I would do what I can to prevent it. And Michael from Michigan as the youngest member here. Matt from Michigan. Matt from Michigan, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no effect. <laughs> okay, so which, which ad was better? The president's ad or the Fox News ad? Which ad would have a better impact on you? Who says, says the president's ad? Not one of you. Who says the Fox <laughs> News ad? Do we have to choose? <laughs> yeah, I mean, give it between the two. Not that good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who, who says none of them? None of them. None of them. Um, hey. Well, I, I think what I'd say to you is talk about three different experiences that I've had with COVID. And the point I want to try to make is how random it is that – and you can hear that from the conversations I've heard today. You know, as Patrick saying he had a cold for three days and didn't really feel all that badly. Um, you all know how I got it. I went into what was supposed to be the safest place in America, the White House. And I went and I got tested every day as I walked in. And brought to the Eisenhower building, swabbed, had to wait there for the test results to come back. If they came back negative, which they did every day that I was there, in the four days leading up to the first presidential debate, um, I could then go into the West Wing. And there were seven people in the map room at the White House for about 16 hours over four days together. And of those seven people, six of them got COVID. In the place that was the safest, most tested place in America. And the only person who was in that room who did debate prep with us, with the president, who didn't get COVID in the immediate aftermath of the first presidential debate was Jason Miller, who was one of the president's campaign aides. Why he didn't get it, I have, I have no idea why he didn't get it, and I got it, and Hope Hicks got it, and Kellyanne Conway got it, and the president got it. 
Bill Stepien got it, and um, <laughs> and Stephen Miller. All of us got it. All of us got it at a bit of a different time, and all of us got it at a bit of a different severity. And by randomness, I mean I was the sickest of everybody and had the longest hospitalization. The, the next sickest person was the president. But the next sickest person after that was Hope Hicks, who was the youngest and most fit person in that room. Someone who, you know, ran four to five miles every day um, in her early 30s and was the most fit. She was out of it um, for a good 10 days uh, and never had to be hospitalized, but called me during it and told me it was the sickest she'd ever been. Uh, two other people in my family, um, a 64 year old cousin who was, um, a smoker. And so she had some potential problem, got it, felt okay in the beginning, wound up hospitalized. Her husband, 63, no pre-existing conditions, great shape. In fact, was still working every day as an active longshoreman on the docks in New Jersey. He got sick as well, caught it presumably from his wife. They both wound up being hospitalized. And two weeks ago, they both passed away. Gosh. How has your opinion changed about the vaccine, if at all? How likely were you to get it when you started this session two hours ago? And how likely you are now? And please, I want to know the moment, if your opinion changed, I want to know the one fact, the one story, the one reason why your opinion may be different now than what it was one hour or two hours ago. So Jen from Iowa, I'm gonna start with you. So I think my opinion has changed. Um, before I would have said, I was in the middle of the fence on whether or not I would get the vaccination. And now I'm leaning a little more towards getting the vaccination. So I probably went from a five out of 10 to maybe a seven out of 10 uh, towards leaning that way. Um, for me, I think the most impactful part was just listening to Dr. Free is it Friedman? Sorry. Um, talk about some of the logistics and like when they were making the vaccine and some of the background information on it um, that I don't believe had been um, shared enough with us as Americans. And um, I, for me, that was probably the biggest turning point for me. I would say I was probably 80% against when this started today. Um, now I'm probably 50-50-ish. Uh, between the numbers that Dr. Friedman gave and uh, honestly the story that Governor Christie gave about a, a healthy adult that ended up passing away from it, it really has made me think a little bit. I would say I was 50-50 when we started. I'm maybe 75 in favor now of getting it. Um, only if it means I can get into the nursing home to see my mother, that would probably push me a lot quicker. I like the doctor's I like the medical situation when they give us the facts and talk to us without any politics involved. I think that helps me see that my bias was probably with the political side of it, getting involved and in just separating the medical side of it. If I can look just at the medical and health side of it, I'm much better off than when they mix politics in with it. 